Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Tonight, a lot of people on television are going to talk about the GOP pledge to America today. And it has some good stuff in there. But it also has some stuff I don't understand. My biggest problem is I'm looking for something bold. I'm looking for, remember shock and awe? I'm looking for something that actually moves us dramatically in the right direction. But maybe, maybe the rest of America isn't there yet. There is some bold stuff in there. They're going to repeal health care, they say. Not bad, but there is also in there a return to the 2008 spending levels, pre-TARP. Um, even before TARP, our spending levels stunk on ice. How about a, how about a return to the 08 spending levels of 1908? Uh-huh. Look, we need bold solutions because our problems are as breathtaking as the Grand Canyon, and that's what we are looking at. And if we keep walking this direction, we will tumble down into it. No one is leveling with you on what will happen if we are not bold. But tonight, we will. Come on. Hey, hello, America. I mean, wouldn't you just like once in a while if someone would treat you like an adult? Seriously? Somebody would just level with you? All they ever tell us is what they think we want to hear, or what, we, what they think we need to hear. Why don't you just tell us the truth? And you don't need to sugarcoat it. But that's what everybody does to suit their agenda, and both sides are sugarcoating. Here's what you get from the right. We have to stop spending, or we're going to drive ourselves into bankruptcy, and we can't afford to do that. And now this plan comes out and it's 2008 spending levels. Oh, oh, okay. It was bad in 2008. I don't know if the Republicans got that. Now, that, all that is true, that we're going to spend ourselves into oblivion and we can't continue to spend. So we have to cut. That's true. But they leave something out of that. On the other side, the Democrats also sugarcoat, but it's the opposite. Here's the example. Here's Jan Schakowsky. She's a flaming on fire progressive. She says spending, of course, is the answer. Of course, she's wrong. She's wrong to think that nothing bad would happen if we just keep spending. That is the sugar. But she does touch briefly on what will happen if we stop spending. Here it is. When we talk about um, the deficit, the crippling deficit for our grandchildren, a lot of talk in the commission about grandchildren. Right. What are we going to leave them yeah. with? But you know, we may free them of debt, but they could also be sick and uneducated right. and unemployed, and that's not a good thing. No, it's not. Yeah, we, we need to because then they're just going to borrow to pay for those things, and they're not going to be free of and, debt. And, so and, and the United you know. States could end up like a like a third world country yeah. if we don't invest. Okay, first of all, we didn't need the Department of Education. We seem to educate this country without the Department of Education a lot more than we're educating it now. Ed Department of Education, relatively new, Jan. So we're not all going to turn into dummies because we have each other and we can educate ourselves and our neighborhoods and our, and our states. We don't need the federal government to do it. But the one thing that she said here that was accurate was the country could end up like a third world country. That's true. She says... That'll happen if we don't invest. Where in the Constitution do you read anything about investing in our country? I, I don't, I haven't seen that word. It's up to you to invest. That's what you do. What, what, what they're doing, you're not investing in our country. You are taking the money from people, and then you're spending it the way you want. Now, that's grand theft, or I think it's suicide. Now, she mentioned the third world. The United States could be a third world country. Two years ago, actually it was about four years ago, I think I first said this to my father, and he said, oh no, Glenn, that'll never happen. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. The only thing that will happen are the things that we deny that could happen if we stay in that denial. This is where we need an adult conversation. We need to be able to look each other in the eye and just say, look, here's the truth. You know, politicians, we know. We know, we know who did it to our country, and it's both of you. It's both sides. You're both in timeout corners. Um, and we were, part, we were part of it. But here's the, here's the thing. Either road we take, we're going to hit a forest. This is, this is economic darkness here. There's trouble ahead. And we're both, both right and left have taken us into this forest. Now we're here. 
who are right here. And we want to go here. The question is, how long do we stay in the forest? Do we get eaten by a lion, a tiger, or a bear while we're in the forest? There is one way to get to, the, get to this road much faster than the other. One meanders in the forest, and I don't know what you have left on the other side. I don't know if you ever get here. I don't know. The question is, there's pain either way. Whichever one you choose, whether it's a Republican plan or the Democratic plan, or my plan or somebody who says, let's just turn the printing presses off and close everything down, pain. The question is, how much pain? How long does it last? Now, what kind of person are you? I'm somebody who likes to rip the Band-Aid off, you know, quick. That's what I am. Just rip it off quick. If it's going to cause damage to the wound, then tear it off slow. But if it's, oh, 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 just take it off, man. Let's take our lumps and let's move forward. What we are entering is a Weimar trap. If you listen to one side, it's a Weimar trap. Now, this is a very, um, this is, this is, <laughs> you know what, it's, it's almost like, uh, I mean, this is a puzzle in here that has never been solved correctly. And, 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 and civilization after civilization have gone into that forest and then never come out. Lords of Finance, this is a book I told you about, I don't know, two, three years ago. It is really a good book. It tells the story of all the Lords of Finance during the, uh, the first and, uh, it's been a while here, I think Second, second World War II. Um, the First World War, it tells the story of the Weimar Republic and the president of the Reich Bank. He had managed to keep his job after World War I, even though he had horribly mismanaged financing the war. Facing a choice, he decided to go along with the new government's plan, and that was to print money to pay back the Allies, because here was the problem. The problem was they lost the war, and then all the Allies, France and England, and America as well, they, uh, they punished Germany. They were going to make them pay for their mistakes and teach them and the rest of the world a lesson, because they were about to embark on the new League of Nations, the precursor to the to the United Nations. So the question was how to pay for it. Germany couldn't pay for it. So they just started print money. Exactly what we're doing now. Okay? The president of the Reichstag Bank said that, that's, that, 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 that will lead to massive inflation. Now the question is why did he do it? Because he knew it would lead to the Weimar trap. You'll never get out of that forest. Ever. So why did he do it? Well, no one knows for sure, but there are three possible answers. One, he wanted to teach the new incoming government a lesson. Two, complete and total economic ignorance. He had no idea what was going on. Or the third answer, and most likely, and this is the one most people agree on, is he didn't have a choice. Why? Because once you're in this forest, it gets spooky. It gets, it gets dark and spooky and you don't want to spook all the people that you're with. You're trying to lead them out of the forest. And you have, once you're in here, you have no idea which direction you're even going on. Well, inflating the money, here was the choice. Inflating the money will lead to interest rate increases, high unemployment, and turn revolution out into the streets. But his other option was to not print the money, and that would lead to high unemployment, uh, people losing their houses and their jobs, and, uh, and revolution in the streets. So there's no good answer in the forest. Unless you stay true to your principles, if you find your true north and you say, what has never worked, printing money, borrowing more, that's never worked. We know it's never worked. But what happens when you're in this forest is people get afraid. And they're like, no, 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 no. We'll, we'll be eaten by a lion. And these people behind us, we're trying to lead them out. And they're all going to freak out. We can't tell them that we're all going to die in the forest. And that's what happens. And then somebody says, here's a match. Print more money. And so then people in the line and everybody's in the forest go, no, no, I got money. I got money. It's on fire. But I got money over here. And it's a trap. That's what happened to Weimar Republic. They owed too much money, just like we do. How to pay for it? They print it. And they never got out of the forest. And then there's always someone here, always somewhere here, 
who says, I'll lead you out of the forest. That time it was Hitler. Because everybody, once they get to the edge of the forest, they are so freaked out, and they have no food left, they have no money left, they have no houses left, they have nothing. That's how it always ends. Now, in a completely unrelated note, President Obama was at the UN yesterday, continuing to promise all of the countries around the world that we'll still be sending them more foreign aid. Here's what he said. Put simply, the United States is changing the way we do business. Good. First, we're changing how we define development. For too long, we've measured our efforts by the dollars we spent and the food and medicines that we delivered. Okay. But aid alone is not development. Development is helping nations to actually develop, moving from poverty to prosperity. And we need more than just aid to unleash that change. Okay. All right. Um, boy, do I agree with that. I wish we would have gotten that about, oh, I don't know, 1908. Okay. So now, here we are sending our own people into unemployment lines and soup kitchens. And now we've decided we're still going to send all the money over there, but we're going to teach the rest of the world how to fish. Um, hey, fishermen, fish yourself first. What is it? Physician, heal thyself? Yeah. President Obama, once you, once you snag a fish and reel it into the boat, then you can tell the rest of the world, you want to talk about arrogance, yeah, then, then you can talk to everybody else about how to create jobs. Look, here's what you need a politician to say. Other nations, I feel bad for you, I really do. But all the money you're getting from us is a loan from a loan. And you ain't never going to pay it back. We know that and you know that. And we're going to have to pay ours back because nobody is going to forgive the big, bad, evil United States. Just like in Germany after World War I, we can't afford it and no one will release us from this debt. Germany kept printing money after World War I until they hit the point of no return and it finally collapsed. Now, are we going to reach that point? Yeah, maybe. I hope we, we don't, but we could. We won't even see it coming because our politicians refuse to treat us like adults and act like adults instead of children. Instead, they just want to keep us being fed candy. Here's some candy, little kitties. Now, what happens on the future? What happens in the future? Well, it depends on us. I want you to know, we're going into this forest, whether you listen to the Republicans or the Democrats. But only one road takes you out. And that is depend on every skill that you have. Depend on the people in the line. As long as you know going into the forest, guys, it's going to be really spooky. Here's what we're going to face. Everybody hold hands. Everybody band together. Everybody have firm reliance on, uh, on divine providence. You hang together. As long as you're saying that here, you'll make it here. But nobody is telling you about this forest, are they? Here's what our future will be. If we do not change our past, if we, don't, if we don't change our behavior now, we're going to either default on all these loans, which they're not going to default. They won't, they won't allow us to default. We will print the money. Our, uh, the other countries, when they say, wait a minute, that's worthless. We want our money. What, do you think they're going to let us keep our oil? You think they're going to let us keep the Anwar? The Gulf? We default or... We end defense. Now, what does it mean we end defense? Well, there's going to come a time where we can't pay for one or the other. So, oh my gosh. But if you are really cool, if you're like totally cool with the United Nations and the blue helmets, that's not a bad option. Why don't we just have the United Nations Army represent us? I said the next two possible, the, these next...